Thank you for this opportunity to present the school. Um, you are at the stage where you're wondering why study politics and why study at UCD. Now, studying politics, you'll see, is just amazing. And why UCD? Well, we are one of the top 100 schools for political science in the world. Uh, that speaks very much in our favor, I think. Um, we are also the largest school of politics and international relations on, on the island. Um, we currently have 27 members of faculty. And more importantly, we are also the most diverse school in uh, politics in Ireland. And uh, diversity both in terms of research methods and methodologies. So we cover the subdisciplines, political science, including political philosophy, uh, international relations, development. We cover issues from every aspect of political life, from the bat and butter, butter issues, elections, citizens' assemblies, questions about constitutions and legitimacy, over to political economy, sustainable development, um, and skipping, 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 lots of other very important issues to political violence, we also have people working on all different areas of the world, including a specific focus on European studies, Asian studies, Latin America, and as you shall hear from my colleague Stephanie, um, the Middle East. Oh. Um, we also have a lot of diversity with regards to methods. Um, we are continually um, questioning what's the best method, and the best approach to each of the questions that we have. And within the school, you have scholars working with a variety of different qualitative approaches, a variety of different quantitative approaches, and also some nerds like me who like philosophical approaches. We take a lot of pride in emphasizing diversity as an opportunity to learn from each other, including uh, different approaches and angles. One of the examples is our uh, program in um, gender, politics, and international relations. And we try to do this commitment, not just in our research and teaching, but also in our practices as a school. Uh, we just had... Uh, got the Asina Swan medal in bronze and working towards silver. And the same obviously goes for our graduate program. Our graduate program is one of the largest. We currently have about 160 graduate students from 23 countries. Uh, we offer 14 different specialized MA programs um, from the traditional ones uh, to the more wonderful exotic ones that we are presenting in the school. We are a great school with a lot of diversity, which means we are offering a lot of different options um, for you to find your angle, your approach, <clears throat> and your voice in political science, development, or international relations. Over to Steffi. <laughs> Great, thanks very much, Alexa. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie at Dornscheider Elking, and it's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm joined here by one of our excellent students, Johannes Gerions. Thank you very much, Johannes, for joining us. I'm going to talk about our program in peace and conflict, and I have a few slides which I wanted to share. So I'm going to talk about our degree in peace and conflict, of which I'm the program director. So peace and conflict, as you will all appreciate, uh, two of the most pressing issues facing our world today. And what we're doing in this program is to, first of all, think about the sources underlying uh, conflict. So what do we know about when conflicts erupt, break out? Um, can we perhaps predict when conflict is going to break out at a certain part in the world? And why is it that we see some countries struggle so much with conflict, whereas others stay mostly peaceful. Uh, we also uh, deal a lot with the question, well, once conflict has begun, what are sort of possible conflict trajectories and conflict dynamics? And as you can tell from the title of our program, we are of course very interested in when 
it's possible to ultimately reach sustainable peace. So we discuss a lot on uh, conflict resolution efforts and proposals. I think you will all agree with me that these are important issues and our MA program has a certain structure in, in which we teach you. Um, so first of all, there are two strands. So we have an MA program and uh, an MSc program. Both of them include six courses on conflict and peace and a thesis, which is written in the summer after you take these courses. Um, in general, you'll take two courses that deal with the subjects that I've just described. And the MSc option then additionally includes two methods modules Sorry, um, so we say courses for courses and modules. So it's I'm I'm not sure where you're from. So if you're from the the American tradition, you will use the word course. If you're from the British or Irish tradition, you will be more familiar with the term module. So the MSc has has modules including um, methods, so quantitative and qualitative methods, and the MA does not include any methods modules, but it instead includes a research design module which teaches you how to set up a proper research project. Our MA strand also has the option of completing an internship in the summer as opposed to writing a thesis. Importantly, both are available part-time as well. So for that, you would then take two years to complete them. These are entry requirements. So in general, you will need an undergraduate degree in a relevant subject. So I hear I list several areas. Don't worry if you're interested and not listed here, just contact us. There are many other fields which I had to omit. In general, you need an upper second class honors degree or its equivalent. So if you're from the US, you would need a GPA of 3.0. There are numerous exciting future careers. So our graduates actually go into many different uh, fields. So we have some students who become journalists. So we could be talking TV, we could be talking audio, we could be talking social media or just the traditional newspaper. Many students go into think tanks where they do research and write policy briefs for policymakers. Some become development workers, some become civil servants, others start working for the government. Hi everybody. It's uh... Great to see you. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my studies because I am enrolled in the Master's Peace and Conflict at Spire. And uh, I actually intended, attended this event last year, so I kind of know um, yeah, what it feels like <laughs> to listen to this right now. Um, and of course, I knew about like Spire being a very well-known school and Ireland being a very interesting place to study peace and conflict. Um, but I'm actually also not from a politics background, but I studied linguistics before. Um, so I was a little hesitant and asked myself if I can actually study at Spire. So I was writing the um, student advisors and got immediate response and they really encouraged me to um, apply. And so I did. And a couple of weeks later, I actually got an offer to study peace and conflict at Spire. Um, so now I'm studying very different modules. And I think this is also very big strength of um, the program that I'm enrolled in because I'm not only learning about international relations and politics, but also about gender and psychology and sociology. So I'm um, reading very different readings in the different modules. Um, also something that I wasn't expecting is how, um, yeah, different the, my fellow students are, like the people I study with, because we all come from different academic backgrounds and also from very different parts of the world. So I always feel like there's so many perspectives and new thoughts that um, yeah, are brought to the table and that I really profit from. Um, and besides that, um, I would also just like to say that UCD is just a nice place to study because it is a huge campus and there's so many opportunities. So there's a sports center, um, there's a swimming hall, there's a cinema. So it, it's really convenient to study and you always meet new people. Um, and especially um, for an international student, it's sometimes, um, yeah, or I can understand why, um, yeah, you are, or might be a little afraid to go abroad and study somewhere where you haven't been before, but um, I had the best experience because the first two weeks I came here, they were um, two weeks of 
introduction like by Spire and also by UCD. So there are specific events just for international students. So you get to know so many people and you get to know so many fellow students. So I like from the very first day that I came uh, to Ireland and um, to Spire and UCD, I had a social network and a social environment. And yeah, I never felt lonely in any way. Um, and something that I um, would like to mention too is that there's many facilities like the library and especially the writing center that is um, uh, interesting for people who's like for everybody, of course, but also for people who don't speak English as their first language. So I'm always um, very happy to go there to, um, yeah, like get help with my essays or with my presentations and um, have people checking my language. Um, so yeah, I think um, all in all, I'm having a really, really great experience. I'm learning so much and I'm super happy to see um, where this will lead me in the future. And um, yeah, I can only encourage you to, to apply for the Masters in Peace and Conflict because it's a really flexible and diverse program. And I think we have a lot of opportunities both within the studies and also afterwards. I'm Stefan Müller and I co-founded the Politics uh, and Data Science MSc, which is the first one uh, of its kind in Ireland and used to be one of the first ones uh, in Europe. So we are currently accepting students for the co fourth cohort we started in 2020. So we have some experience and we also have uh, experience uh, in terms of where our graduate students end up. And you will hear, hear more about that from Samantha. What's important to note for our uh, uh, MSc in Politics and Data Science is that you can join either with uh, uh, an undergraduate degree in the social sciences or uh, arts, or with a more technical degree. Um, so if you have, uh, uh, for instance, an engineering or computer science background, you might wonder why is it important to study politics and data science in particular? Well, whether we like it or not, data are becoming more and more important they are becoming uh, available basically everywhere in politics, uh, in policy advising, in NGOs, in the private sector, in the public sector. You will see data and we need people who can analyze them and who can also in particular interpret them critically and draw conclusions from this. And this is the overarching goal of our degree. If you have a background in social science, you might not have used programming languages before and we're very well aware of this. And uh, because of this, we offer two modules, statistics in R and Python programming. These are two of the most frequently uh, uh, and popular programming languages. So even if you have never worked with these uh, software uh, packages before, I can promise you after the first term, you will be able uh, to use them and uh, to use them for projects. If you have a technical, what do I call it, technical degree, you might have already used uh, R and Python, so you don't have to take these uh, modules. You st can still take them as an optional module, but you will be taking more kind of substantive classic political science modules. One uh, uh, core module is called the politics of misinformation, where we look at uh, experiments, where we look at social media and try to understand the spread of information, misinformation, disinformation. After the first term, you will all have a similar enough level of uh, quantitative methods, and then you can choose among uh, a variety of optional modules. So I'm listing only a couple of modules here. One is called quantitative text analysis, where you will uh, analyze very large text corpora. Maybe Samantha is going to talk more about that in a quantitative way. International political economy, peace and conflict studies. You can take modules from these uh, areas as well, European governance and uh, I had a look over 30 additional modules offered by our school and also other schools. So we have cooperation with the School of Sociology. We're building a new one with the School of Economics, a School of Communication Science. So you have uh, really a lot of choice uh, among modules. What is also special about the uh, MSc Politics and Data Science is a group-based module called Connected Politics, where you will be working with two or three other students on a group project. And the goal is to create a full-fledged research paper. And this really highlights the progress that our students have made and also the topics you can study. For instance, one group looked at emotional expressions of politicians on social media using cutting edge computer vision techniques to identify emotion uh, in tweets that were uh, uh, 
posted online by newspapers by parties. Another group looked at sentiment expressed by militant groups in press releases and public statements. We had one group, for example, looking at the complexity of speech before and after cameras were introduced in parliament. Uh, and another group looked at uh, the role of experts in so-called deliberative assemblies and whether and how these experts structure subsequent Q&A sessions. And just to show some examples, the sentiment paper by militant groups was recently accepted for presentation at the um, American Political Science Annual Conference um, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, and we plan that one student will present it here. The paper on experts in deliberative assemblies on Friday was uh, accepted in a peer-reviewed political science journal. And all students involved in this project had no coding or programming experience before. So it really shows what you can achieve uh, in a couple of months and what we train you for. So to sum up, you will learn uh, a lot of skills, Python, are machine learning, quantitative text analysis. These are skills that are very, very um, uh, popular and um, uh, popular on, on the job market. If you check LinkedIn, for example, these are skills that employers often look for, even in kind of classic uh, uh, politics jobs. And importantly, you will use these methods to address social science research questions. So you will know which method is maybe appropriate or not appropriate to address a certain question. And you will also be aware of uh, the limits and ethical issues involving these uh, methods. And I think that's very important. Our uh, recent graduates from the past few years work in a variety of sectors. Here I provide some examples. Uh, tech companies, larger ones, uh, smaller ones, financial services. Uh, and there are a lot of these companies in Ireland and in Dublin in particular. We have one graduate uh, who started in a public opinion institute, market research. Uh, one other recent graduate is actually now working uh, at Zurich Airport in the cloud and data operations unit. And we also have um, uh, graduates who um, continue doing research either in a PhD or one graduate, for example, is now working at the Irish Central Bank. Thank you very much for listening. And I hand over to one of our recent graduates, Samantha Minchan. Hi, so I'm Samantha Mincher. I graduated with um, my MSc in politics and data science um, this last year in 2022. Um, so I just kind of wanted to talk because I'm not an unconventional student, but in that I went to do my bachelor's and then I worked in policy for four years and then I returned to do my master's. So I was just going to kind of walk through that and kind of how my situation looked. Um, I graduated from UC Davis in California, obviously I'm not Irish, um, and I worked as a policy analyst in California, working mainly in education policy. Um, I then took a break and did a postgraduate visa and worked in Ireland in two of the major law firms, just trying to feel out where I fit in political science. I loved politics, I loved political science, but there's so many different avenues it can go, um, so I experienced um, how solicitors work in law in um, Ireland, and then I returned back to California and continued to work in education policy. Um, obviously, COVID happened um, around that time, and I was really exploring what, how to expand my current role. I was always infatuated with the idea of data and data science, but thought because I came from a social sciences background, there was no way for me to break into the world of data science. So when I was looking to return to Dublin after my postgraduate visa and after I worked in California for a while, I was deciding between a program at a different university in UCD. And I ultimately chose this program because I it was so unique that I could not do it. And given that I wanted to expand my career a little bit beyond policy, um, it seemed like learning the fundamentals of data science and programming languages um, would be such a good opportunity to you know, um, kind of expand my horizons and go into these different fields um, and learning it within a discipline that I was comfortable with being political science just seemed like this perfect fit. Um, during my time at um, my master's, um, Stefan talked about a little bit, but so we did a pro Python programming class, which is really interesting. I want to point out I had no prior experience with any coding languages. Um, and so we were able to simulate election behaviors using Python, which was a really fascinating product um, project. We got to also work in groups, which in being an international student is so important because you form bonds and are able to form a social group. 
um, one of my favorite courses that um, we did was um, quantitative text analysis and using text as data. Um, I'm now infatuated with um, computational social sciences and learning about how to use text as data. Um, my thesis assembled a very large text corpus of um, social media tweets of Irish um, TDs and looked at really what they talked about and um, if certain parties discuss certain things. But even in the ability to assemble a text corpus of nearly half a million tweets um, and even more data points, it was something I could never, I never really thought I'd be able to do before. And then I also wanted to talk about the Connected Politics Lab because it was such a great part of this course. Um, we got to work in groups, and then I was the group that uh, looked at speech complexity in Parliament um, after um, cameras were introduced, which was just such a unique project. Within the Connected Politics Lab, you actually work with a professor within Spire who has this idea, um, but just doesn't, you know, have either you know the time or the resources to kind of invest in it further. And it normally has a bit to do with, um, you know, text analysis or um, computational social sciences. I did want to say I just felt completely supported by staff. Emails were always returned. Um, I have to say Stefan Mueller, who is also my thesis advisor, is the most responsive um, professor I've ever really had. He will always, he's always responded. There's also normally a Slack channel so you can keep the, um, you know, conversation going. And um, currently I work in technology consulting using data-driven methodologies to solve complex business problems, which is what I wanted to go into. Um, so I was able to switch careers. And I really just wanted to say that this program works on whatever level you want it to. Um, if you come from a political science background and want to engage in the emerging you know, machine learning and data science, you can expand your current job and even switch careers like I did. Um, and then if you come from a technical background, I always believe that political science and learning political science expands so much more than learning about an election system in a foreign country. You learn high level patterns and systems and how to identify where there are problems or um, it just really teaches you to look at things in a macro level. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much to, to everybody who's interested in, in coming to UCD in any form, but uh, particularly for the MSc in Human Rights. Um, I'm really grateful to my colleagues um, and to the to the students, everybody who talked before me, because the um, the entrance requirements are very similar, right, for the MSc in Human Rights, um, and that is despite the fact that human rights is really a discipline unto itself. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a, an important phenomenon in the world that um, human rights have become the currency for our evaluations, both of state action, um, people's own particular situations and international relations. Uh, and all states um, have uh, human rights obligations and all international organizations have, have uh, human rights obligations. So our program is interdisciplinary as a result. Uh, you'll get um, the core modules are in law, uh, politics, political science, and uh, the philosophy or theory of human rights. And What's, I teach the theory of human rights module, and what's great about that is it can seem very, very abstract if you if you just look at maybe even my syllabus. But in fact, the great thing about human rights is um, it has to be applied, and it has to be applied to real people's situations in detail. And so we have judges in, say, the European Court of Human Rights to make these difficult calls when individuals think that they've been discriminated against or have had their human rights violated. Um, we also, uh, beyond thinking about violations, we can also maybe think about how people can enjoy their human rights uh, and uh, kind of a positive vision of human beings which emerges from the ongoing and constantly developing and innovating international system and regional systems of human rights. Um, maybe one really, really good example is um, disability rights, the rights of disabled people. Um, is a rel the rights of, uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is a relatively new convention, but it has really quickly become a really central core covenant for international human rights protection. And it's a place where they move, people have moved on from sort of very small issues surrounding um, uh, maybe discrimination or barriers which disabled people face to, to considerations of, of much more substantial issues of justice, what a, a just society for disabled people would look like. Uh, and so for that reason, um, human rights, which may seem cut and dried, 
um, actually is a constantly evolving discipline, which uh, gives you a lot of different job opportunities. Um, I saw there were some uh, questions about international development. International development is also very similar in its, in its structure. It's its own field and has an interdisciplinary um, approach. Um, in any case, one of the great things about human rights is because all states have these obligations and all international organizations have these obligations, um, students from the program can go on to uh, work in a variety of sectors. Uh, I some of them have already been listed, but um, a human rights degree will help you get jobs in international development or humanitarian action. Um, and we have centers for international development, a center for humanitarian action, and maybe most important for this course, a center for human rights, which is very, very active. It has frequent seminars. It's a great place to bring all my colleagues together, or all our colleagues together who work on human rights at UCD. Um, beyond that, um, Ireland has a, an exceptionally um, large and active NGO and civil society community, and, uh, and they have their own events, and there's a lot of ways to get involved. Um, in terms of jobs people get, I went, recently went to a, uh, an event hosted by the American Embassy, uh, but also with uh, Rethink Ireland, which is a social entrepreneurship organization in Ireland, and by the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, the Irish Department of Foreign Affairs. I met uh, graduates from our program and from every single one of those organizations. So I was very pleased to see them all again, but also to see them in one place. Um, so if you have any questions, just do get in touch with me through the uh, graduate spire address. Uh, I'd be happy to talk further about this. But instead, I'll, I, you know, I'll introduce you to the person who, who's much more able to tell you what it's like to be a student here. Uh, Connor, Connor Stack is one of our most civic and engaged students you've ever had in the program. <laughs> um, so my name's Connor. Uh, I'm from the United States, and I'm studying an MSc in human rights. Um, and I chose UCD not because it's in the top 100 or not because it has renowned faculty, staff, uh, research outputs, et cetera, et cetera, um, but because I have family members that studied at UCD, aunts, uncles, grandparents, grand uncles, um, and I always wished to study abroad. Um, and so I selected UCD based on my familiar relation. Um, and I've, in attendance here, I've come to find out that UCD is a phenomenal place to study. Um, some of the supports that are put in place, echoing what Samantha said earlier, the Postgraduate Research Center in the Joyce Library is phenomenal. I do a lot of my work in there as well. Um, the libraries as a whole across the campus, you have there's four or five libraries that UCD has um, on the Belfield campus, and there's one on the Smurfit Blackrock campus. We have access to all of those. So whatever study mood you're in, you're welcome to go and study in any of those. It's an awesome, awesome environment. Um, I, I specifically chose to study um, a master's of science in human rights um, from my influence previously. So I have an undergraduate, a double major undergraduate degree in uh, history and sociology. I have a graduate diploma in public administration and leadership. Um, and I worked for uh, 10 months uh, with the AmeriCorps program in the United States uh, in the education sector for a university. Um, and that really sort of inspired me to go and pursue access to education, equitable access to education, and try and learn about the human right that everyone should get an education and pursue that with my own research um, and my own curiosities. And the program here at UCD has allowed me to pursue that. The human rights program is flexible enough that whatever interests you have, whatever backgrounds you have coming into this program, you're able to use it to explore it and you can make the program your own. Um, and it's, it's a phenomenal thing to take advantage of. Um, and I've learned so much about the differences between studying human rights from an international law perspective, studying human rights from a social activist and advocacy movement perspective, um, from a philosophy perspective, you know, and, and asking the questions, what are human rights? Who gets human rights? Um, when do human rights come into play? Um, and it, it, it's honestly been a phenomenal, phenomenal time. Um, as uh, Dr. Finley pointed out earlier, 
um, myself and Marcus are currently running a seminar program for undergraduates where we want to inform undergraduates more about what you can do within the field of politics beyond, you know, run for elected office or um, go to parliament or what have you. There's so many different avenues that Spire allows you to pursue. Um, and personally, human rights being one of them. Um, on, on top of me selecting human rights to pursue my focus on, on education and studying that, I, I picked human rights over the international relations program here at UCD because I wish to have a more narrower focus when it comes to looking at um, something on the international level. And human rights has allowed me to do that. Um, and even just picking the courses, I'm able to pick similar courses to the MA or the MSc in international relations as some of my optional modules for the MSc in human rights. Um, some of my plans after graduation, I graduate, it's a one-year course. I graduate and I'm done with my course in August. Um, I'll be looking for policy analyst um, positions in uh, state government and local government. I'll be looking for research positions in NGOs advocating for more equitable access to education. Um, and and those, are, those are some of the avenues that I'm looking at right now. Um, and I honestly, I'd recommend studying human rights and I'm seeing human rights here at UCD, just not only on the basis that you can really, really make this degree your own, um, however, and whatever prior experiences you have coming in that you wanna build or expand upon or learn further about. Um, prior to this course, I've never taken a political science module. My first political science module was last September. Um, and it's, it's been honestly really, really great. Um, but the staff and the faculty and the community within Spire at UCD is also incredibly welcoming. Um, I'm very, very blessed to have such a large international cohort of immediate friends on top of listening to the international ideas that are presented by the incredibly diverse group of people in all of my modules. Uh, thank you for having me and thanks to uh, everyone who's spoken before me. Uh, so my name is Marcus. Uh, I'm studying the MA in International Relations uh, and I'm doing the full-time program. Um, one of the questions I'm always asked, asked is why did I choose UCD? And surprisingly, it, again, like Connor, it wasn't because of uh, kind of the top 100 status or the kind of um, research output or anything like that. It was actually because I did my undergraduate in UCD um, and I did it in politics and international relations. And more than anything, I found not only was the program incredible, but I really found some of the modules fascinating. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do going into college and that really, really helped kind of refine um, my focus. And I got along really well with a lot of the faculty too. Um, I formed pretty close bonds with a lot of them and that really, um, that really helped. Um, I actually took two years out between doing my undergraduate degree and doing my master's. Um, because, you know, I, I again, didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I was kind of curious about a lot of things, wanted to try a few things out. Um, after about two years, I, I did a little bit of work in the in the Irish Civil Service um, with the Department of Education and seeing some of the opportunities out there for um, people with um, master's degrees in uh, politics fields. I contacted a few of the faculty members um, and I just asked to speak to them, asked them a few questions about the different programs and they were more than happy to, um, to talk to me. Um, and that really kind of encouraged me to join um, and I decided to take the plunge. Um, as well, another really interesting or another, sorry, really appealing option for me was the fact that you can do uh, an internship with the MA because kind of my undergraduate experience was I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I know I didn't want to go near data. I know I didn't want to go near too much kind of the quantitative development um, just because I, I'd always been um, pretty well at maths and, and things like that. So I figured having the option to do a, a, an internship might be a little bit more appealing. Um, but I chose international relations specifically because in my undergraduate, I'd always been fascinated with how the world worked, why states interacted with each other the way they did, 
why did people do the things they did? Why did groups on, on kind of a global level um, interact with, with kind of one another the way they did? Um, and I just had a cursory glance at the, the module lists um, that were available online. And I really liked the sound of a lot of them. And again, contacted a few of the, the module coordinators and sat there and, and, and spoke with them. And so going into this, this master's, again, didn't really know what I, what I wanted to get out of it. All I knew was I was just really hungry to learn. I didn't have any burning questions, burning research questions. I just wanted to learn. And so initially I decided to take a really broad overview. So I picked modules in political economy. I picked modules in development studies, in defense and security. And it was actually doing um, a specific module, political economy and security, where I kind of found my niche, my, my passion. I went, right, this is what I really, really, really like the, the, the sound of. Um, and so what I was able to do was kind of tailor my degree around that then. And um, so I picked modules in international security. Um, I spoke to module coordinators and said, this is what I want to kind of go into. How can I get there? Um, and having that ability to kind of tailor my degree to the subjects that I want to go from a really broad overview into something a lot more narrow was really, really helpful. Um, one of the kind of the the one thing I, I keep saying, and I, I I can't I can't emphasize this enough, is how welcoming and how just patient uh, and helpful the the, the faculty are. Because you, you're given this impression in your undergraduate degree that oftentimes professors and faculty can be very scary. Um, and then you sit down with them and you can talk to them about anything. Um, I've had conversations about educational policy, mountain biking and nuclear deterrence all in the same conversation. And it was through those conversations that I discovered, I actually really wanted to do a thesis. This was something I'd never really considered before. Um, and it was through speaking with, with my professors that I, I really got a lot of confidence with this. And um, another thing that I, that I really love about UCD is the supports that are available um, for, for students. So I have an ADHD diagnosis, which makes university life quite challenging. Um, it also made kind of figuring out, um, kind of getting back into that college mode after two years out, it made it very, very difficult. But having the UCD Access Learning uh, Center was a, was a godsend. It was such a big help um, because you have staff who are fully aware of, um, of my condition, um, who I can talk to about it and, and not be you know, spoken down to, who are understanding. And not only that, not only are the Access staff understanding with the entire faculty of, of UCD Spire and so when I need help or when I'm asking for help and things like that I never feel intimidated I never feel like I, I don't belong I always feel like I, I'm I'm really welcome um, and so kind of going out of my master's now and um, as Connor said finishes in in August I've gone from not having a clue what I wanted to do with my life all the way to uh, having a pretty solid foundation, pretty solid plan of what I want to do. I want to go into defense policy and intelligence analysis um, or, or academia. Um, the work on my thesis, again, a project I never considered doing initially has ballooned up to something I never knew I, I'd ever be capable of. Um, and so it was really, really exciting going from not knowing anything about what I wanted to do all the way to having a solid plan, solid foundation and a clear path to get there. So. If I could sum up why you should study in UCD and why you should study Inspire, it's the support and encouragement. You know, it has been an absolute godsend and it's been just incredible to, to spend the past few months here. So, um, yeah, I, I hope you consider it. It's, it's been, it's been life-changing for me.